Hello, this is Vern, and the painful feeling of shame from your love past is limiting your capacity to step into an amazing and healthy relationship today. Stick around, because I'll be demystifying how to transcend that painful feeling in our episode today. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to your great life to be.com today. It's another edition of Get the Love You Crave, and I'm very excited to be sharing with you how to end the feeling of shame from your love past. I connect with so many women who have the capacity to create an amazing relationship. They're smart, they're beautiful, they're accomplished, they take care of their bodies, <laughs> they have their great moms, many of them. Uh, some of them are still without children, but I, regardless of where they are in their lives, the moment they connect to an amazing guy, somebody who shows up with a lot of strength and masculine energy, they almost like make themselves small, they feel less than. And part of that feeling of being less than is they connect and tap into a feeling of shame, mostly from their past. Shame from the way they've done things, shame from the way they've experienced love, shame from the mistakes they've made, shame from the, the things that have been done to them. And when they connect to that feeling of shame, it's almost like an immobilizing factor that prohibits them from opening up, creating deeper attraction, calling that man into their life, and then showing up as a high value woman. That's all those things happen as a result of staying in the feeling of shame. So what I'm gonna be sharing with you right now is four simple steps. Whenever you feel a sense of shame about what you've gone through, to transcend it in such a way that you can get what you really want, which ultimately it's a conscious, open, amazing relationship with a, with a guy who deserves your love. The first step that I'll say is very, very important if you want to transcend this feeling of shame is to acknowledge it and feel it. If you try to push it away, which is what most human beings do, the moment you feel that feeling of shame is so sharp and it's one of the most painful feelings for any human being, the most common behavior is to push it away, pretend it's not there, try to change it instantly and not acknowledge the presence of it or the message that it's trying to give you. So the moment that you recognize, okay, shame is entering my heart right now and you don't try to push it away you just allow it to hit you first but hit you consciously there's unconscious shame and there's conscious shame conscious shame can be transformed and changed unconscious shame is usually pushed away so the moment you hit it hits you and you identify it i want you to breathe into your heart physically this is not just like this is hocus pocus metaphorical bullshit thing it's physically breathe into your heart i want you to take deep breaths in recognize what's going on and then I want you to see yourself. If you could actually imagine you're inside yourself and you get outside of yourself and you're looking inside of you and you're seeing a very clear distinction, visually seeing a clear distinction between you and the behaviors that you've done and you've, you've stepped into in your life. Because the moment that you feel really ashamed of something, the reality is that the behavior, the pattern and you have all become meshed into one. For some reason, you think that you are your behavior, you're identifying very closely to that thing that's making you feel ashamed. The moment you recognize, okay, I am not my behavior, I am not that thing that I did, nor am I that thing that was done to me. I connect with so many women who were abused physically, emotionally, including rape, and the moment they are able to step out and recognize that that is not them, there's not an ounce of that behavior that's really who they are at their core, then starting the process of healing is much more free from that standpoint than if you fully identify, if you make that your identity. So the moment you start identifying, okay, you know, the thing that I've done, the pattern that I think is so stupid, or the pattern that I think is so destructive, or this thing that this guy might think is so idiotic, for example, that's what you think inside. If, the moment you feel that that is not me, that's something I've done, instantly you gain a sense of power because you can change your fucking behavior. Changing you is a lot harder than changing your behavior. So if it's just about changing your behavior, then you can step into new action. So once you recognize that third step is to develop what I call X-ray sense of calmness. X-ray sense of calmness is simply a principle that says, if you could get metaphorical X-rays, where you could see not inside like the, I don't know, uh, just the like, see through walls, but see through people's hearts, see through people's insecurities, see through people's pain, see through people's behavior and past, you would understand that we all, no matter how amazing that human being that you're connecting with, you think it is, has done some incredibly painful and shitty things and has flaws and insecurities and the same shame that you're experiencing, they have at some level. They may not be showing it. 
So if you understood that we all have idiosyncrasies and differences and quirkness and shady things and darkness and light, then you don't see yourself as this isolated, unique individual that's flawed or broken. You recognize that at some level, we are all flawed and broken. At one level, we're all <laughs> radiant light, beings of light, <laughs> okay? So connect to that part of you that, that knows and understands that every human being, because of just the act of being human, has gone through some incredibly painful things, whether they're sharing them or not. And that makes you feel like you have a shared humanity versus the distance with everybody around you. Third, the fourth step is simple. Once you allow all of that to sink in, but you still have that vibration, because here's the thing, because you didn't push the pain, the pain is now inside of your system, physically inside of your body. I want you to do something physical to get it out of your body. I want you to physically move differently. I want you to do something that requires breath, that requires movement, that requires flexibility. And that could be exercise, jumping jacks. It could be dancing. It could be punching a bag. It could be anything that gets the energy out of your system so that it doesn't translate into depression. It doesn't translate into pain. It doesn't translate into back pain. It doesn't translate into something that's going to eventually create stiffness or pain in the body. And when you do that, you're in essence alchemizing, using that energy that got in that was painful, using it for something powerful. And then from that space, you can step into new action. You can step into greater connection with someone. You can step into a depth, more depth of contribution. You can step into feeling your sexiness much more fully. You can step into setting boundaries. From a feeling of shame, it's incredibly hard to set boundaries, to step into contribution. From this new feeling, from the transformation and the alchemy of this, you can do absolutely anything. So if you think this is helpful, insightful, and useful, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Number one, click like on this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel. Number three, on the description of this video or on your link right here, on your somewhere on your screen, you'll see a, the, your, your, an ability for you to just click on that little thing, subscribe to a free webinar that I'm hosting that's going to be sharing with you how to find your soulmate in 90 days or less. Super powerful stuff, and it's absolutely free. If you have any questions for me, place a comment on any of my videos, including this one, and I'll respond to you personally or create a video just for you. Thank you.